Hello and welcome to the second of six video presentations designed to acquaint you with the third edition of the CQI-12 Coding System Assessment. These videos will familiarize you with the document layout and the overall process, train you on how to complete each section, and provide insight into the exact expectations for completion of the assessment. The AIAG Continuous Quality Improvement, or CQI-12 Assessment, was developed as a self-assessment to help automotive suppliers develop a planning management system to meet the coding industry's best practices. A team of process experts, including chemical suppliers, industry consultants, applicators, and automotive OEMs contributed to the development of this document. The Excel file contains the actual CQI-12 assessment, which is divided into five working sections. For the purposes of today's video, we will be focusing on sections one and two. Section one is a deep dive into the quality management system. It focuses on the quality system, existing documentation, and utilization for many tools, including staffing qualifications, advanced product quality planning, failure mode and effect analysis, process control plans, customer specifications, capability studies, data collection and retention, system monitoring and reaction, work instructions and training, quarantine and rework, customer concern and resolution, and maintenance and prevention. Section 2 moves out to the plant floor. It focuses on the production process, documentation, spill prevention, segregation, and material movement tracking using the following tools. Incoming part inspection, part identification, non-conforming product identification and segregation, process interruption procedures, trap point monitoring, cleanliness of the facility, and finished part inspection. Version 3 of the assessment has added guidance for the assessor. These are specific questions crafted to provide not only the answers to the general questions, but also the actual documentation that should be reviewed and attached as supporting evidence. If possible, any handwritten documentation should be scanned, labeled, and attached as a PDF file. For each item, the assessment allows for three ratings, conforming, non-conforming, or not applicable. When the actual condition fully meets the guidance, the rating is conforming. When the actual condition does not fully meet the guidance, the rating is non-conforming. These ratings are not judgments, but observations. The reviewing customer will determine if the ratings assigned by the assessor or assessment team are acceptable to their requirements. When a rating of non-conforming is assigned, the applicator should review the existing conditions and or practices and determine whether improvements should be made or if the current practice is justified. Justification should be described in the objective evidence and comment section for each item. The rating of not applicable, or NA, should only be used when the item does not apply to the process under review. Let's take a look at Section 1. To ensure readily available expertise, there should be a dedicated and qualified surface finishing person on site. This individual should be a full-time employee, and the position shall be reflected in the organization chart. A job description shall exist, identifying the qualifications for the position including coding and surface finishing knowledge. The qualification shall include a minimum of five years experience in surface finishing operations or a combination of a minimum of five years of relevant formal education and surface finishing experience. In this example assessment, the objective evidence supports a rating of conforming for all guidance. Now let's look at section two. The control of suspect or non-conforming product is necessary to prevent inadvertent shipment or contamination of other lots. Procedures shall be adequate to prevent movement of non-conforming product into the production system. Procedures shall exist addressing authorized personnel, appropriate disposition, product identification, and tracking of material flow in and out of the hold area. The non-conforming hold area shall be clearly designated to ensure segregation of such material. In this example, the facility lacks the required hold area and procedure to prevent unauthorized movement of non-conforming products, earning a rating of non-conforming for those conditions. Because the facility does not have such a system in place, evidence of documented material movements is not applicable. This completes our review of sections one and two. Please join us in video 3 for an introduction to the new pyrometry section. 
Thank you for watching this video. For more information, contact quality at AIAG.org. And don't forget to check out the other videos in this series.